Hi, third grade, it's Mrs. D'Amico. Today we are going to look at unit three, week one, day two. All right, so yesterday, if you remember, we were reviewing those vowel, consonant, E syllable types, and we're going to add on to that information today. Repeat after me for our drill sounds warm up. A squash, ah. A wash, ah. A safe, a. E, peat, e. I, pine, I. O, home, o. U, mule, u. U, rule, u. C, k, sock, k. C, cat, k. And k, kite, k. Nicely done. Okay, next we're going to watch a video to learn a new concept. So, go ahead and listen. Hi everyone, it's Miss Ann back again today for level three. And today we'll be looking at uh, unit three, day two, and what new concepts are being taught on this day. So again, this may be a little bit of a review for you, some of the things that you might have learned in second grade with foundations, or for some of you, it may be new, so you might need some extra practice with it. But we'll be looking at lots of things today, and you're going to need a few materials, okay? So I want you to pause in a minute and go get your magnetic letter board that looks might look like this, or it might be a paper version of this, but where you're going to have your letters to be able to move around. You're going to need your student notebook, the one with the castle on the front, like this. And you're going to need your magnetic letter board that you can write on. Oh, sorry, not magnetic. It's the dry erase board that you can write on, that you can use this for writing with your dry erase marker. So you're going to need a dry erase marker with your dry erase board. So go ahead and pause the computer and go make sure you have those things handy so you don't have to stop and look for them when we get to those things. Okay, we're going to continue today talking about the vowel consonant E, that second type of syllable that we learned about in our first day of Unit 3. We're going to continue talking about the vowel consonant E and some other things that might happen with that vowel consonant E. So first of all, I want you to look at this word up here. Everybody say the word lick. What's the word again? Lick. Let's tap it. L -I -K. Go ahead and spell that with your magnetic boards. So you're going to need your magnetic boards now to spell that word. L -I -K. Good. Why did you use a CK there? and not a C or a K by itself. You know, we don't usually spell it there with a K like that, do we? Why did you use a CK at the end? Do you remember that? That's right, it's because right after a short vowel in a one syllable word, we use a CK at the end. So good job if you remembered that and used your CK. All right, so lick would be spelled L-I-C-K. Now, what if I want to change this to the word like? Let's tap what we hear. L I K like. So I hear L I, I hear a long vowel now. So I know there's L, I know there's going to be an I, but what's making that I say I? You're right, it's that E on the end. So it's not a short sound anymore. And we have now a vowel consonant E word because we need an E on there to make it make that I sound. So in this type of word, we're going to need to use the K instead. So we now have I K like that E and the vowel consonant E made the vowel long. So we heard I, so we know the K in there is going to be a K. So after a long vowel in a vowel consonant E word, we're going to spell it with a K, not a CK. Remember, the CK only comes after the short vowel in a one-syllable word. All right, 
Let's try a couple other ones. Let's spell this back. L I K. All right, sorry. I moved one over. K E. All right, you ready for another one? Everybody say the word check. Say it. Check. Good. Let's tap it. Ch. E. K. All right, I hear ch. Go ahead and pull down what you would spell for check. Ch. E. I hear a short E. So that means I'm going to have to add k, k, ck at the end. Check. Do you hear that? Ch. E. K. I need a ck because it's right after a short vowel. Good job. Let's spell that back. C H E. CK. All right, let's try another one. Say steak, like you put a steak in the ground. Steak. Everybody say it. Steak. Let's tap it. St a k. Oh, I'm hearing a long vowel a in there. Let's do it again. St a k. And that k sound. Let's go ahead and spell that. St A, I hear the long vowel, so I'm going to have to use the K, not the CK, and then I have to remember to put the E, because that E, remember, was making the A have the long sound. Steak, so this is like you put a stake in the ground, like when you're going to build, have a tent put up or something, you need to put a little wooden stake in the ground to help hold it together. Let's spell it. S T A K E. Steak. Good job. Did you remember the K there? Not a C K. Great. Let's go ahead and spell it back. S T A K N R E on the end. Let's try one more. Quake. Quake, like something shakes or like an earthquake. A quake is a shaking feeling. All right, let's tap it. Qu a All right, I hear a long vowel again in that k. Quake, qu a k. Qu That's our Q-U. I hear a long A. And now I'm going to use what letter? The K, right, the K. And now I need my E because of that A being long. A, k, quake. Excellent. So we have our vowel consonant E for the word quake, and we spelled it with a K. It becomes a right after a long vowel sound. Okay, good job. You can put those aside a second, and I'm going to review one more thing for you that you might remember. Remember that we had some things with our spelling options. Do you remember talking about spelling options? All right, so we know that the z sound, you learned that in the first day of this unit, z can make two sounds, right? It can, it can, it can be two letters, sorry. It can be a S or it can be a Z, okay? So S or a Z can make that z sound in words, all right? So when we hear that, Z sound, we know our choices could be S or Z, but it's kind of tricky when we're trying to spell a word with that in there. So let's try with the word nose. Everybody say it. Nose, like the nose on your face. Ready? N -o -z. All right, so let's think. We have N, we have an N, O, and we have something here, Z that we know could be an S or a Z. Since we might not be sure on that, we're gonna put a blank card there, okay? And then we have our E, our silent E at the end. So between these two vowels, we're hearing that Z sound, all right? So you might know what it could be. Maybe you already know that it could be the letter S, especially since we've seen that word recently. Where you may have seen this word a lot and you already know that it could be an S, all right? But our choices are S 
could be an S or it could be a Z. So those are our two choices there, all right? So if you don't recognize which one it is, what would we do? We would look in our spelling options dictionary and that is in your student notebook. You have this in a student notebook as well in second grade and there is one in third grade. This begins on page 44 where we see lists alphabetically of all the things that might be spelling option type of words, okay? So we would look up, if we weren't sure how to spell it, we would look up the word nose under the N column and we would go right on down to look for that. We know it's N-O, but we just don't know if it's an S or a Z sometimes. And there it is right there, the word nose, N-O-S-E. So we know that we would use the S there in that particular word. So there's our word nose, N-O-S-E. And that's where we use our spelling options dictionary. You could also ask someone in your house, say, I know this is the choices, but could you help me to spell this word? Or you could look in a dictionary as well, a regular dictionary, or sometimes electronic spell checkers are also used like on a computer or something to help you to figure out those words there. All right, so use your dictionary, and that's what good spellers usually do. They have the choice and sometimes they have to look it up. There's a lot of words I need to look up when I try to spell and write things because I'm not exactly sure how to spell them if they have tricky sounds in there. Okay, we're going to continue listening to her with part two. Here we go. Hi everyone. It's Miss Ann back again today. So let's try to do a few with your dry erase. So I want you to take your dry erase boards and I might write some up here or I might also write on my dry erase board. Let's try another similar word. Everybody have your dry erase board and a marker. All right. Let's try the word rose. Rose could have two different meanings, like you rose up from the chair, or it could be like the kind of flower that's a rose. Let's say the word rose, rose. Let's tap it. R -O -Z. Oh, I hear that tricky Z sound. So we know it could be R O, and we know that Z could have two different sounds, right? So we're gonna put a box there. Just an empty box, because we don't know if it could be S or Z. You might recognize it. If you do, you could try and see if you got it right. But if you're not sure, where could we do? Where could we look? We could look at our spelling options dictionary, okay? So what two letters do we know that could say Z sound? So we know it could be spelled R-O-S-E or R-O-Z-E. So we know S or E could be our choices there. So on your board, you might have something like this where you wrote the R, O, and a blank box, and then the E. And underneath, you could write R-O-S-E or R-O-Z-E. And if you weren't sure about how to spell that, where would you look? That's right. You could look it up in your spelling options dictionary. So let's get that out. And we find the letter R. And we look for that R-O. Because we know it's an R-O. And there it is right there, the word rose. R-O-S-E. So once we look it up and we know what it is, you can take your marker and you can fill it in with an S in there. R-O-S-E. And if you'd like, you can write it again just to be sure you've got it. Rose. So it would be this one right here. We could cross that off if you want to. All right. You want to try a couple others. Let's try a couple more just to get some practice. 
because you might have been out of practice with spelling options, although I know you've done this before. Let's say the word fuse. A fuse is something electrical that you might have a fuse box in your house that has fuses or you can, um, a fuse can burst or break if it's uh, overloaded in your house with electrical things. So let's think about that word fuse. Ready and let's tap it. Fuse. All right. So I hear a long vowel there. I know we have a vowel constant E word, but I hear U and I hear Z. So we know it could be an S or a Z there. And then we have our E. So between those two vowels, sometimes we know that S can make a Z sound or a Z can make a Z sound. All right, so let's try. What would be our options? We know it could be F, U, S, E or F, U, Z, E. And I'll give you a hint that it's more common for the S to be used between these two vowels. But there are some with the Z, so it is still a little bit tricky. But if you had to take a good guess, the S might be the one to choose because it's more common. And then you could still look it up. All right. So let's see. F-U-S-E or F-U-Z-E. Let's see if that's in our spelling options dictionary. So get your notebook out again. This time we'll look under the F. So I'll find the F letters and words here. And we know it's F and a U. So you're gonna look carefully. And I see it right at the very end, the very last word that starts with the letter F. And how do we spell fuse? F-U-S-E. Good job, fuse, F-U-S-E. Very good. So we would take our board again and you would fill in the S right there. And we have the word fuse. So it would be this one, not this one. F-U-S-E, fuse. Let's try one more before I go. And then you may wanna practice some on your own or with your teacher or at home. Let's try this word, blaze. Blaze is a big fire, right? A big blaze would be a big fire. Let's tap that, b -u -a -z. All right, I hear that z sound. Do you hear the option in there? Blaze. Go ahead and start to write blaze and put a box where your option would be. Do you have it? Okay, we have our blend at the beginning. All right, so we know that Z could be an S or a Z. So I'm gonna write it both ways underneath and you do that too. Do you have both of the options down? All right, let's get our spelling options dictionary and we're gonna look under the B words. And we know it's BL. So we're gonna work, work our way down looking for the BL. Oh, and I see right here, B-L-A-Z-E. This one happens to have the Z in it as our option. Blaze. B-L-A-Z-E. All right, so go back to your boards. And we're gonna put the Z in there. Our word is blaze. B-L-A-Z-E. This one right here and not the one with the S. So like I said, the S is more common, but there are still some words that have the Z in there between the two vowels. 
All right, so this is what good spellers do when they're spelling words and they're not sure. We, we think about what would be the options, what would be the choices to spell that word, and then we look it up in our dictionary or our electronic spell checkers, whatever we have handy, or if you have someone around to ask about that, you could put down your options and ask someone the best way to spell that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed our lesson today. Practice some of these at home and with your teachers, and I'll be seeing you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, third grade. The last thing we did in foundations class today is we practiced our lowercase two o'clock letters that we learned recently. The first one being lowercase c. We also practiced lowercase a and we practiced lowercase o. So if you aren't sure on the steps on how to form those letters, I will show you one more time in a moment. Have a piece of paper and pencil handy if you don't have those worksheets at home. Okay, the first one I wanna show you is letter C. Here you go. C is a two o'clock letter. It starts on the grass line. Point to the grass line. Glide up towards the plane line, then around to two o'clock. Trace back around to the grass line and make a tail. Okay, the next letter is lowercase a. A is a two o'clock letter. It starts on the grass line. Point to the grass line. Glide up towards the plane line, then around two o'clock. Trace back around to the grass line, then straight up to the plane line. Trace down to the grass line and make a tail. And the last letter is lowercase o. O is a two o'clock letter. It starts on the grass line. Point to the grass line. Glide up towards the plane line, then around two o'clock. Trace back around to the grass line, then up around to connect the lines, and make a swinging bridge. All right, third grade, that's all I have for you today. I will see you back next time. Thanks.